All right, guys, today's FRQ 2005 number three question. This one deals almost exclusively with the Phillips curve. All right, so we gotta assume that the table below shows us the unemployment and inflation data in country X as a result of a shift in aggregate demand. So we have this table that tells us last year and this year's unemployment and inflation data. Now, one thing to point out before we even get started is make sure that you're looking at the right data point when you're plotting these on your Phillips curve. The biggest mistake that I've seen on this one is people flip-flopping unemployment with inflation. So it starts off, draw a correctly labeled graph of the short run Phillips curve for country X, showing the actual unemployment and inflation rates for both years, label the Phillips curve SRPC. So we wanna draw this out. We got our, make sure you got your axes labeled properly. The vertical is inflation rate, the horizontal is unemployment rate. You gotta have those labeled right. And then we have our downward sloping short run Phillips curve. Make sure you got a label on that one as well. Now we have to plot the points. So last year's, unemployment and inflation rate, 8% inflation, 2% unemployment. We have the demand change and all of a sudden our point shifts to a new, our, our, our data shifts to a new point on the curve and we've got 4% inflation and 5% unemployment. So make sure you plot those points correctly and you're in the right column or row on that table when you're doing this stuff. So now assume that the short run aggregate supply curve has shifted to the left. All right, so Identify one factor that could cause the aggregate supply curve to shift to the left, all right? So there's a couple different things that work here. Higher business or corporate taxes, increase in input prices, increase in production costs, or anything that would cause in production costs to go up, and then in, or an increase in the expected inflation. Any of those would work. So all you gotta do is identify. Now the next part has us on the graph show how the shift would affect the short run Phillips curve. This one's a little more difficult. So I'm gonna throw the SAD curve out there just to kind of explain what's going on here. So we have our left shifting short run aggregate supply curve. Now that's gonna cause a higher price level and a lower GDP, which means a higher unemployment rate. So we're gonna to need to get to a point on the Phillips curve where we have a higher price level, higher inflation, but a lower, um, sorry, but a higher unemployment rate. So what's gonna happen is that short run Phillips curve is gonna shift upward, all right? And then you don't really have to draw the point. All that you really have to show on there is that the short run Phillips curve is gonna shift upward and that's enough for the answer. I've kind of put a point on there showing that both the inflation rate and the unemployment rate would go up as well. All right, so that's it for part B. Now, part C says, assume that the natural rate of unemployment in country X is 5%. Draw a correctly labeled graph of the long run Phillips curve and label it as LRPC. So we can just add this right on here and it's at 5%, natural rate of unemployment is 5%, so our LRPC is gonna be right at 5%. All right, nice and simple. Last one, what is the relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate in the long run? So because this is a vertical curve here, or a vertical um, line, the LRPC, there really is no relationship in the long run, there's no, or there's no, there's no trade-off between the two. So no matter what happens in the long run, our unemployment rate is gonna stay at the natural rate, or 5% in this case, no matter what happens. And that's because of those auto adjustments that occur in the long run. Over time, it will kind of always come back to this point. All right, so that's it for that one, guys. Focuses mainly on the Phillips curve. It's a nice practice for that concept. All right, make sure you're taking a look at my other FRQ walkthroughs. So thanks for looking at this one and take care.